Hey everyone, and welcome to Cooking Companion TV. I'm Jenna Edwards, and this is a recipe demo of fish cakes by Melissa Clark. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. This is a very involved recipe, but luckily it's very, very good, and it makes a lot. And I'm confident in saying the effort is worth the reward. We have a lot of ingredients to prep, so pour yourself a glass of wine and enjoy the video. Chop one green onion, both the white and green parts. Seed and mince one serrano chili. No matter how tempting it is to just dig in a fingernail and fish out the spine and the seeds, don't do it. The volatile oils and the pepper will seep into the quicks of your fingernails and they will hurt for hours. So please try to use a knife to cut around the spine and the seeds. However you do it, you wanna end up with long strips that you can then chop into small minced pieces. And let's chop about three tablespoons of fresh basil. So pull off a dozen or so leaves and stack them and slice them into ribbons. And then turn your cutting board to chop the other direction and you have even pieces of chopped basil. And measure out three tablespoons. Save any extra for garnish or to flavor your mayonnaise with later on. And now roughly chop three tablespoons of parsley or cilantro. Now I like cheating with these herb scissors. Again, measure out three tablespoons and save the extra for later. And zest one small lime. All these ingredients we've prepped so far can go into the same bowl because they get added into the recipe at the same time. And add a pinch of cayenne pepper. Crack in two eggs. Also, I forgot to show that we've also measured out a third of a cup of panko breadcrumbs, and that's at the bottom of this bowl. Now we need to peel and thinly slice one pound of russet potatoes, which is about two of them. You should end up with about two cups of potato slices. You can do this by hand, but this is a place where a mandolin would make this go a lot quicker. And we're just about ready to cook, but I forgot about the garlic. So smash and peel two cloves of garlic. and season the fish with one teaspoon of kosher salt and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. I'm sprinkling it on the fish and then rubbing it in gently. You'll wanna use firm white fish fillets like hake, black sea bass, or flounder. I'm using flounder. Now in a large skillet over medium heat, heat two tablespoons of olive oil. The oil is ready when you see ripples or waves in it. So add the garlic pieces and cook until the edges are golden brown, about two minutes. Now add the fish to the pan. And let it cook for just one minute. Then add two tablespoons of dry vermouth or white wine, plus two tablespoons of water. Turn the heat to low, cover your skillet, and cook until the fish is just barely cooked through eight to 10 minutes. Move the fish to a plate, keeping the liquid and garlic in the skillet. If you don't have a fish spatula, it's a really wonderful tool. The handle is short, which is a little awkward if you're used to long handled spatulas, but I use this type of spatula often and I think it should be part of a well-stocked kitchen. Now don't worry about the fish falling apart. It should, and it will get flaked even more. It's fish cakes, so it's supposed to be in pieces. So let's turn the heat to high and add in those potato slices and half a teaspoon of kosher salt, and then add water just to cover the potato pieces and bring this to a boil, reduce it to a simmer, cover and cook until the pieces are tender about 15 minutes. This is a great example of layering in flavor. Anytime you have leftover cooking liquid, find something to cook it in, especially serving alongside whatever you just cooked, and, and that's how you build depth into your food. So it's been 15 minutes, and my potatoes are soft from their simmer. We'll drain them along with the garlic and put them in a large bowl. Now roughly mash the potatoes and garlic with a fork, which frankly should be pretty easy. And if your fish didn't get flaked completely when you removed it from the skillet, go ahead and do that now and stir it into the potato mash. 
And now for all those ingredients we worked on at the beginning, let's give that a quick stir before adding it into the big bowl. I just think things mix easier like that. All right, let's stir everything together. The eggs, herbs, the scallion, the chili, the lime zest and the panko until it's all combined. Season it with salt if it needs it. And now cover and chill for at least three hours. Now I know for sure I'm not cooking all of this at once. That's all at one time. So after it's chilled, I'm gonna make a few cakes to freeze. So using a quarter cup scoop, I'll form patties about half an inch thick. and place them on floured parchment paper, making sure they don't touch because I'm gonna freeze them just like this. And then I'll stack them once they're frozen so they don't freeze into a gigantic lump. If you're ready to cook them, shape your patties, again, using a quarter cup scoop and shaping them into half inch thick patties and place them in some flour on a plate. For an entire recipe, you only need half a cup of flour, so you really don't need much flour. I found it easiest to place all my patties into the flour and then scoop flour onto the sides and the top and then flip them. Although every time I touched a floured patty, I'd make wet fingerprints and then I'd have to reflower that side. So this is another place the fish spatula would work well. In the meantime, heat an eighth of an inch of olive oil in a large skillet, preferably nonstick, and really make sure it's hot. So lots of ripples in the oil, but not smoking. And then gently add your fish cakes with your fish spatula. And I wouldn't add more than three at a time because you end up cooling down the oil, which means more oil seeps into the cake rather than frying up a crisp barrier. This is three large cakes and one small one in an eight inch frying pan and it's pretty crowded in there. So the frying time is five to eight minutes on each side. And that just depends on how hot the oil is, which depends on how much cold food you've added to the pan. So my first couple flip flips were premature. They're light brown, but they're definitely not a good crunchy brown. And that's okay, I can just flip them back over later. So one of the visual cues I picked up on with this recipe is watching the speed and the amount of bubbles around the cake. As long as it looked like active bubbling, it was still frying. And once the bubbles slowed down, like the one in the top right here, I knew that side was done and it was safe to flip. When they're removed from the pan, set them on a paper towel lined plate to drain and they're ready to eat. Serve with a few squeezes of lime juice and a side of mayonnaise and or Dijon mustard. I really like the mustard with these. That's it for this recipe of Fish Cakes by Melissa Clark. Get the ingredient list at cookingcompaniontv.com slash fishcakes. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to this channel for more demos just like this. I'm Jenna Edwards and thanks for watching.